Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm doing something a little bit different, something I've not done for a while and that is a club review. And the club in question today is the Callaway Maverick Iron. It's not the Max and it's not the Pro, this is just the bog standard Maverick Iron. Now I've had these in for a while, done a lot of fittings on these and sold these to a lot of people but there seems to be a general genre of people that these are aimed for. And that is people with slower swing speeds that need to get the ball in the air and want to gain a little bit of distance. Now for someone like me who swings a 7 iron at 90 plus miles an hour um, on a good sort of swing day, these aren't designed for me because the loft on this 7 iron is 27 degrees. So that to me is borderline a 5 iron for me. So when you're looking to buy stuff like this, you need to take into account what the lofts are of the 7 irons because oh too many people go into a shop and they are sold four to pitching wedge. Now the four iron in these is 18 degrees. That is my two iron. My two iron is 18 degrees. So you have to take that into account. Don't go into places and be sold four to pitching wedge because that's the general consensus. The other thing to take into account is the pitching wedge. The pitching wedge is 41 degrees. So if you've got pitching wedge to then specialist wedges, and we're talking like 50, 56, 60, or somewhere in the middle, you are gonna have a nine degree gap between your pitching wedge and your specialist wedge. So take that into account when you're buying things like this. So for me, if I was gonna be fitting somebody on these, then the least iron I would probably pick for them would be a six iron. A six iron is at 24 degrees, which is somewhere around about a normal four iron, which is like 23, 24 degrees. 6 iron and then I'd go to A wedge which is coming in with these irons at 46 degrees which is then perfect to then go into your specialist wedges. So when you are looking at stuff like this definitely definitely look at the lofts of the club. 6 to A wedge is definitely a better option for most people than 4 to pitch and wedge with these. Now why are the lofts so strong on these? Well these are designed to get the ball in the air. So the first thing they have is an AI flash face cup technology. So what that means is Callaway Super Duper computer has designed the face and then behind this face, there's lumps and bumps and bulges. So what that's designed to do is no matter where you hit it on the face, it's designed to give you better ball speed. Whereas a blade, for example, has a sweet spot like here and then anywhere else around the face just drops ball speed. This is designed to keep the ball speed up for people who struggle to hit the center of the face on a consistent basis. The other thing it has at the bottom and you can see here is what's called a tungsten energy core. Now that is designed to bring all the weight to the bottom of the club to help get the ball up in the air. So for people who have slower swing speeds, although the loft is 27 degrees, they've counteracted that with weight at the bottom to aid getting the ball up in the air because a less loft will make the ball go further, but on a normal club that will produce a lower ball flight. What this is designed to do is to aid bringing that ball flight in so it comes in line with a normal ball flight for say like a 34, 36, well maybe not 36, like a 34, 33 degree seven iron. The same sort of similar peak heights that is designed, this is designed to give you, but just give you that little bit of further distance because of the loft. And the other thing that is inside this face is what's called microspheres. So it's a little bit like speed foam that we know and love from TaylorMade. So it's been injected with some form of like polymer or urethane, uh, urethane microspheres, and then it's designed to give you better feel off the face. So all in all, the club itself is designed for a game improver, mid handicap game improver, someone who wants to Get, gain that little bit of distance, but have that forgiveness of the face to be able to get the ball out there, no matter where on the face you hit it. There will be drop-offs, without a shadow of a doubt, there will be drop-offs wherever you hit from, if you don't hit it in the center. But the face is designed to lessen those drop-offs. So the sole on this is thick, but it's not like really thick. The Maverick Max is like this thick, whereas this is sort of in between the Pro and the Max. That's why where it is, it sits. But the top line itself, when you look down at it, it's very, very thick. So that just screams forgiveness. That is so like confidence building for someone who struggles to get the ball up in the air and struggles to hit the ball. Seeing that nice thick top line will just give somebody a little bit more like confidence when it comes to striking the ball. The back itself, as usual, it is a cavity back and then they've put in some sort of plastic just for aesthetics with the, the 
Maverick and the Callaway logo in. Um, don't believe that's got any performance enhancing like virtues. It is just there to make it look a little bit prettier. These white lines do help frame the ball up when you've got the club down at address with the ball, which I do like on the bottom. Um, and as for offset, there is quite a lot of offset. You know, if you look down at that, um, and we'll do a close-up of that. If you look down at the ball, there is quite a bit of offset. I'm not a massive fan of offset. I like a little bit of offset to help me. Um, but what that offset will do is ju it's just there for forgiveness. It's there to help people square the face up. For me, I think that will just will promote a massive pull um, or an overdraw for me because of the, the offset. But what we'll do is we'll get into the simulator and we'll see what kind of distances we get. Now this is a bog standard seven iron shaft. It's a 95 gram stiff for me. Um, with 27 degrees of loft, I expect this to go past 180, maybe bordering 190. I don't expect it to go as far as my five iron, which would be about 190, purely because of the length of shaft. Even though they're the same loft, the shaft is a little bit longer on my five iron. So I'm expecting this to go post 180 um, in distance, whereas my seven iron currently goes around about 170. So I'm expecting this to go a little bit further. But let's get in the simulator and just give you a little bit of what it feels and sounds like. The numbers really are irrelevant when it comes to stuff like this because what I get is not what you get. So the, like, the numbers are completely irrelevant, but it's all about how it feels and how it performs. Uh, right then, so let's get down and hit some shots. Like I said, I'm going to give you a bit of a, my sort of take on how it feels and how it performs really, what it sounds like. The numbers I get, I've said, are completely irrelevant. But I'm expecting this to go a long way for a 7-iron. Yeah, down at the ball, from, like the way I address the ball, that top line is so thick. And then I can slightly see the back of the club behind it, but then I do lean the shaft forward. If I've got the shaft sort of parallel with my sternum, then you can't see the back of the club. But the way I lean the club forward a bit, um, you certainly can see the back. Now, distance-wise, this just could go anywhere. Yeah, as expected, similar sort of uh, ball speeds that I get with my normal seven around like 120 to 125. So the ball speed's normal, but the because of the way the loft, I'm producing 16 degrees of loft on there, whereas my normal seven iron is sort of 20. I'm gaining like 10 to 15 yards on what would be a normal seven iron shot. What I do like though, is the peak height at 31 degrees. That's a great peak height and the descent angle of 45 is, is pretty good as well when it comes to uh, being able to stop the ball on the green. Spin of 5.7, I am hitting off a mat, so I tend to add around about 500 spin, what would be on grass, so 6,000, post 6,000 spin is great for a seven iron. It's kind of where you want to be between six and 7,000. So as a first shot, I'm really impressed with this. It just goes too far for me, that's the only problem. So I hit that one out of the toe, so it'd be interesting to see what kind of drop off we get. Yeah. So that one came right out of the toe, but to be fair to it, you know, the launch angle is 16 the same, the spin's still up there at like around 5,000, so it's still spinning well, but the peak height at 22 has dropped off, the descent angle has dropped off, and I've lost sort of 15 mile an hour of ball speed because of that toe strike. But all in all, it's, you know, it's still traveled 156 yards. So there is a drop off, but it's still got out there. Now I want to really go after one and see what kind of like, how, just how far this can go. Right, I leathered that, I've got no idea on direction, but I tried to absolutely annihilate that one. Now that shot there is the big issue for me, is it's gone nearly 200 yards with a seven iron. You know, the ball speed's up there at 132, you know, great. You know, it's brilliant for my ego, but it's just gone miles. And if I'm hitting this into a 180 yard green, I've just flown it by 20 yards because it's just come off fast off the face. Now granted, I tried to hit that a bit harder, but you know, on a swing speed level, I don't think it was, a, there was a massive, massive difference. 
The spin now, however, at 5,000 is still pretty good for a seven iron. Um, it's just, it just flew off the face. So if I want to go out onto my golf course and boost my ego and say, yeah, I've just hit my seven iron 200 yards, this is the club for me. Was another good strike. Really good height, really, really good height. I'll be honest though, the feel off the face is really, really good. Like when you get it out the center, it feels as good as anything. It just sounds really, really good. It feels great, sounds good. It's just too strong and lofty for me. That's quite a good example of why I wouldn't use this club. That has come off like a bullet. It's got 3.8 spin, which is no spin whatsoever. It's, you know, it's just come out so low and so fast. I'm overshooting greens. I've got no idea when I hit this club, how far it's gonna go, no whatsoever. I could hit the next one thinking like, you know, I've just done a gap test, 200 yards is my club with this or 180 and then, out comes that low spinning bullet. So that was a little bit toey again. <coughs> so again, that was a bit of a, a toe ball, but it's done really well. The, the speed off the face is still there. The spin is still there for what I'd expect from this kind of loft. This is a good club for a game improver. Let's have one more and just try and absolutely annihilate it, just for my own ego, just see how far we can actually get this club out there. I have nailed that. Absolutely nailed it. Tell you what. It's just further than my forearm. That shocked me actually, because like I say, this that's pretty much gone further than my forearm. That's my sort of forearm carry, but with four degrees less loft. So, you know, the ball speed is there coming off this face. For me, it's just too inconsistent when it comes to how far it's going. I just wouldn't know. I'd, I'd worry about that low spin bullet that would come out of it. But for someone who's game improving, wants that distance, wants that help, wants a little bit of weight and like thickness behind the ball this is a great option okay so there we have that in the simulator as you can see for me it is just too inconsistent like just bomb balls out there i mean like 218 with the seven iron is ridiculous this club i think and i've fitted a lot of people into this i think it's a great club for game improvers mid handicappers who need that help to get a little bit of distance, get the ball up in the air. Now for me, there's no substitute for loft that gets the ball up in the air. But what Callaway have done here is put a lot of technology into the club to aid the, the lack of loft. So the lack of loft is helping get the distance and then the technology, the tungsten weighting, the AI face, the microspheres, all that to aid ball speed and like launch is there to assist you in doing it. If you're in the market for a new set of irons, your sort of mid to high handicap and you just want a bit of help go and take a look and have a test of the maverick iron because it's certainly a contender for one of the best game improvement irons i've tested but if you're like of a a good playing standard unless you want to feed your ego and be able to hit seven irons 220 this is just not the club for you if you want that control and you want that consistency then for me, this club isn't right. But for someone who needs help, it is a perfect, perfect club. Well, I hope you've liked that little review that I've just done of the Maverick Iron. If you are new to the channel, please drop a subscribe. There are a vast array of different things that happen on this channel. I'm on Destination Scratch. I'm trying to get myself handicapped down to scratch so you can follow that journey. I do club reviews, do product reviews, and I do just general vlogging sometimes where I bring my wife into it and my newborn baby. But otherwise, I've been Lee Whisker. This has been a review of the Maverick Iron by Callaway, and I'll see you all next time.